for joining Mamang Zazi Talks. My name is Francisca Zanka from Mamang Zazi, Mommy and Me, and we're joined here today by the lovely Esther Kimani, who is a lactation specialist and who's going to be taking us through breastfeeding, all the ins and outs of breastfeeding. Yeah. So, Karibu, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Yes, we're so happy to have you. Yeah. And uh, maybe we could start from the very beginning. Mm. What is a lactation specialist? What what, what, what does a lactation specialist do? Okay, so a lactation specialist is somebody who is trained um, to support mothers in the whole area of breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. So we are trained in first educating mothers, even before they get the baby, mm -hmm. doing a breastfeeding class with them so that they know what to expect. A lot of us just think breastfeeding is automatic. I'll get the baby, put them on the breast, and then they were very happy. shocked, yeah? <laughs> so, and then um, following when the baby comes, to guide you through all those things that mothers have, whether it's latching, breastfeeding issues, uh, engorgement, mastitis, all those things that happen um, during the whole breastfeeding per period that mothers have challenges. So to help a mother navigate these challenges so that they can have a good start to the breastfeeding journey um, and just so that they're able to breastfeed their babies for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you mentioned uh, guiding mothers through the breastfeeding journey mm -hmm. and there's a lot of um, like with the advertisements, there's this new wave of mothers who are not going to breastfeed, they're mm -hmm. opting to you know, use formula. Yes. And uh, so what are some of the benefits of breastfeeding? Breastfeeding is amazing. It's not only beneficial to the baby, mm -hmm. but to the mothers. So a lot of mothers that think that um, if I breastfeed, for example, my bust will you know, you will sag, will sag oh, yeah. and all that. But that's not true. The breast will sag anyway. I mean, I keep telling mothers, You've seen nuns who've never breastfed, but they are, at some point, it will go down gravity <laughs> it will do its work. Yeah. So breastfeeding, what, what actually makes the breast like is hormones. It's not about breastfeeding. Um, it's beneficial to the mother. It protects you against some forms of cancer, like um, breast cancer and, oh, really? and, and yes, and ovarian cancer when you breastfeed your baby. It, it helps you lose the pre-pregnancy weight. You don't have to hit the gym as hard as, as you should because it helps you cut off that you, weight. You know, I actually heard that, but I thought it was a myth. Because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's, there's some mothers who have lost weight, and yes. there's those who haven't. So I always assumed it was a myth. Actually, it's because the ones who haven't, is because they eat for three. Ah. Yes, how you eat also after breastfeeding. We're not saying don't eat, eat well, but don't eat for three. You don't need to, to eat so yeah, much. Eat, yes. the right quantity. eat the right quantity, and you'll find breastfeeding actually working for you. Mm -hmm. For the baby, it's it's the perfect food. Is it digest? It is affordable. Mm -hmm. um, it's free. <laughs> it's free. Yeah. Um, we did um, costing, and we realized that for you to um, give your baby um, infant formula for the first six months, it will cost you approximately close to half a million oh, wow. when you count the bottles and the sterilizing and the formula itself and the, and if you have twins then you're in trouble so and and the cost that this baby's immunity does not grow so you find that your baby tends to get sick more often mm -hmm. and you're back to hospital so when it really costs it it is very expensive not to breastfeed um, it helps your baby's gut to mature your baby's gut um breast milk has as um uh, has antibodies and enzymes that help the baby's gut to mature. So mm -hmm. less risk of allergies in the future, less risk of even um, you know diseases that you carry in the family like diabetes and high blood pressure and all those things that we see running families. Mm -hmm. When you breastfeed your baby, you lessen the chances of them in the future getting those diseases. So the breastfeeding is so perfect for the baby that I, 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 I call it almost a scene for any mother Not who can. Mm -hmm. We know there are those who can't for one reason or the other, but if you really can, give this gift to your baby. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when we dive deeper into those who can't, what are some yeah. of the reasons that might prevent a mother from breastfeeding? Yeah. Um, the, the most common one is um, if a mother is HIV positive. Okay. A mother who is HIV positive can breastfeed especially if her viral load is low, she's been um, being checked by the, by the doctor, mm -hmm. she's been consistent with taking her medication, um, she can breastfeed comfortably um, with the guidance of the doctor, but it is her choice. A mother can choose that. Because I'm HIV positive, I really do not want to risk. To risk. So that's okay too. Mm -hmm. So that mother, we, we say that's fine. Um, we also have mothers who have other, other um, um, metabolic diseases which, which would make them uh, probably have taken medications that would not be 
good for the baby mm -hmm. uh, during breastfeeding. And um, others are like with heart conditions that they need, they need um, breastfeeding may place a toll on their body. Uh -huh. So it's usually a mother who's unwell. And then we have a very small number, 0.5%, whose breast didn't actually mature well during adolescence. Oh, okay. So that now when breastfeeding comes, the, the ducts do not form properly so that they're not able to, uh, to make milk at all. Um, other women are women who might have no milk supply because of a condition called a PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Mm -hmm. Because of that, their supply can be very low. But those women with good support right from the beginning and through pregnancy, they can actually breastfeed uh, effectively. And I know we're going to get into mothers who, uh, like how to in increase your breast milk production. Yes. But I am curious about the ones who you said that the, the, the breast didn't develop fully. Yes. Is that something that can be rectified? Mostly no, okay. because this is a physiological development thing. Okay. So if the ducts did not form, there's, there's nowhere for the milk to actually, um, you know, and, and those women will actually have no milk at all. Okay. They tend to have very small bars. You know, those women will look almost have flat, no bars, like they're they are almost yeah. flat. So that's, that's, yeah, but they are very few, like zero point of the population. Oh, so, so it's a very rare it's condition. It's a very rare condition. Okay. Majority of us can have enough milk, close to 99% can have enough milk mm -hmm. to supply to their babies, especially when they start their journey well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so why don't we go into the quantity, the amount of milk a baby actually needs from the beginning until mm -hmm. uh, we get a bit old. I know you came with some yes. balls to actually show the size of the stomach. Yes, so we call these tummy balls uh -huh. because they represent how a baby's tummy actually um, looks like from birth. Mm -hmm. And at birth, day one, um, the baby's tummy is literally the size of a grape. Look at that. Wow. The size of a grape. It's really small. Mm -hmm. So a baby needs approximately 5 to 7 ml. That's a teaspoon of milk. Mm -hmm. So this baby, when you see that water, most mothers will say, I'm just, I'm not, I don't have milk. I want to see what, I'm just seeing water or some yellowish stuff. That's usually colostrum, that's the first milk. And most of us expect to see white, you know, the mature milk. But mature milk does not come until around day five. Mm -hmm. So at birth, your baby needs very little milk. Mm -hmm. But this little one is not efficient. They're still learning. So they're going to take a, a bit of time. They might take between 30 minutes to an hour to actually get that five you now. At mm -hmm. around, and, and their poop looks like that. It looks black. That's oh, right, right. The, 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 the first, first poop. poop. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then by, and the, and the colostrum stimulates the time.
you notice when babies are breastfeeding, they look at their mothers, they they play with them, they touch them, and this is part of how they form social connections and and even attention span. And so you're teaching your baby that I can actually pay attention to you as you feed. So respect your baby's space. Mm -hmm. So you can express later. Um, there are some products nowadays that help you collect the breast milk okay. that you can put on your on your bra. So if you can get that, that's good. But for expressing, wait until your dad, your baby has finished feeding. All right. Yeah. Okay. So full attention exactly. for that period of time. Exactly. All right. Your baby will awesome. thank you. <laughs> yes. And there's something you mentioned about an improper latch, mm. uh, and then the pain. You know, it starts to crack. Mm. So. Um, is an improper latch the only reason for like sore or cracked nipples? It is 90% of it, it uh -huh. is, especially when they start cracking. Mm -hmm. So it's normal to feel a bit of sensitivity mm -hmm. in soreness the first few days. Because I mean, especially if you've never breastfed before. But it should not be painful. Mm -hmm. But if it's painful and sore and cracked, most times it is caused by an improper latch. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you need to correct the latch because it means that the baby is not able to hold the breast the way it should. And that also tells you that if a baby does not hold their breast properly, as I say, they get very little milk, they don't mm -hmm. get enough. So you find that this baby is feeding for very long periods of time, taking two hours to feed. It's because, as I say, it's like the straw, they can beat the straw, so they get very little milk. Yeah. Um, or they feed, they get tired and sleep. So you find this baby does not add weight properly, mm -hmm. um, the mother is stressed because she's in pain and then so it's a whole myriad of, of problems that come. So a lot of issues with breastfeeding can be sorted by getting a proper latch. Okay. Yes. And what treatment methods are there like for the for the, the cramped crack, crack crack nipples? So one of the best is sort out the latch, get yeah. the latch well. Because even when the latch is good, mm -hmm. um, if, if if you're cracked you won't feel pain. That's the amazing thing. If you really? collect a latch, even with the cracks, it you only feel pain when the baby starts, then after that, it goes away. It goes away. Okay. So that's how amazing a good latch is. Um, you can also express a bit of your milk, um, express so that you, your milk is full of antibodies, you see, to mm -hmm. the healing properties. So you can apply around the, the, the oh, area yeah, yeah. and the and the nipple, it helps heal. You can also use uh, medical grade lanolin, because I see people using the ones you use on the nails, that's mm. not the lanolin you use. On it's, the nails? Yes, you know there's the lanolin yeah. used for, for our nails, no that's not the lanolin we use, we use medical grade lanolin mm -hmm. um, that is safe for, for breastfeeding. Okay. So you can use that in, in your doctor or, 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 or you can even buy some of the products come. Um, some companies sell mm -hmm. the nipple creams, so those are the ones that you use. Medical grade, lanolin. Okay. Yeah. But I know some um, some people are usually a bit hesitant about using, mm -hmm. you know, the creams because mm -hmm. other what if effects does it have? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You have to look and read that it's a medical grade mm -hmm. lanolin. Don't just use any product because this is this is food for your baby. That's where your baby is feeding from. Mm -hmm. So you need. That's why I'm, I'm always telling moms. I know you tell each other, but please always confirm with your doctor okay. before you yeah. buy anything because mm -hmm. your doctor will be able to guide you if that is a safe product to use for you and your baby. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, clogged? Because we've heard about clogged, clogged ducts. Clogged duct. Yes. I think also sometimes maybe you see a black patch. Yes. Is that the same as having a clogged duct? Yes. Um, clogged ducts are actually, when the milk is being formed mm -hmm. around um, the, the, the ducts that are forming, the, some ducts, just like, a, like a, a tube or a mm -hmm. pipe, if there's some that's causing that milk not to come out. Again, a poor latch. So if a baby is not latching properly, it means they're not emptying their breast properly. Okay. So this and milk is still being produced. So at some point, this this duct can form a knot, mm -hmm. you know, it forms a knot, so it clogs, mm -hmm. you know, so this it goes milk and that prevents the milk from flowing. Um, you can also have engorgement. Engorgement is when now the clog ducts, because it is not allowing milk uh, to come out, mm -hmm. the area, you know, the, the, the tissue around those ducts now swell up because okay. now they are, they are getting irritated by 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 the, the excess milk. excess milk, mm -hmm. and then now if that is not treated, we go to mastitis, which is now infection has mm -hmm. set in. So, for real, one of the things that leads to all this is poor latch. That's what we always keep drumming: get the latch right. 
then you're kind of protecting yourself from all these other things. Mm -hmm. um, letting your baby sleep for long, you know, um, so that the baby's not feeding every two to three hours. So the milk comes, but there's no emptying mm -hmm. that can lead, that to, lead to, to lead to lead to all these uh, clogged ducts and mm -hmm. gorgement and mastitis. Mm -hmm. um, giving your baby other supplementary feeds, you know, like you give maybe formula or other things because you want the baby to sleep for longer. Mm -hmm. So that, your baby waking up often is actually good for you because it also so protects you, clear, you the clear out the milk mm -hmm. so that you don't get to that point where you have these issues. Okay. Yeah. And so how do you know you have a clog? Um, so usually a clogged duct, you will feel like you have a lump, mm -hmm. something like a lump right on the breast. It will feel like it's a, um, yeah, a lump. Okay. And that's the best I can, I can, I can, uh, I can explain. So you feel a lump, and sometimes it tends to be very painful when you touch it. Mm -hmm. So to unclog it, you need to get the milk flowing, because even when the baby breastfeeds, it doesn't. Because it's clogged, mm -hmm. so you can use um, a hot compress. You get a hot compress that you that you massage around um, mm -hmm. your 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 breast, around 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 the breast, and then once you now come, once you've done the hot compress, it's almost like to relax the muscles around your, your that that area mm -hmm. that has clogged that, and then you take some oil, just some normal oil, cooking oil. I like cooking oil because. It's edible, yeah? Mm -hmm. So then your baby's feeling, so it's great. And then now come to where you're feeling the ducts, and you can manipulate it, going towards the nipple. Because that's where you, try you, and yeah, it you massage it going forward. Yeah? Okay. It's like you're trying to, to get it. Maybe let me use this. It's like you're trying to get it okay. to, to open up, yeah? So, so you can massage circular motions like that. Mm -hmm. Then when you feel it like it's, because you feel it under you, it's like it's relaxing. Mm -hmm. Then now you start to push, to push it. You're also not using very, very forceful because you don't want to hurt your tissue, you know, to, 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 to create injuries on your breast. Yeah? So comfortable. Yeah. Um, that's why you're using oil, eh? mm -hmm. Yeah, comfortable until you feel that lump go away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, under your hands, you should stop feeling it. Then you know that that, that has not clogged. Mm -hmm. For engorgement, you can massage around the, the again, with a hot compress. Mm -hmm. Take some oil, massage is really good. Compressions, we call it compressions, like you're compressing mm -hmm. your breast like that, yeah? Mm -hmm. And if your baby is a lazy feeder, which is what's leading to compression, because your baby is feeding for a very short time and not really emptying, one of the tricks that you do uh, when they're feeding is when they start suckling, you do compression of it. Also so that they're forced, more. they're taking to take more, and because milk is flowing, they're forced to keep on. Exactly, so they won't fall asleep. Yeah. So then the, yeah. they're, they're trying to yeah. keep up with the Exactly. Okay. So again, that's that's why we support the breast like this with a C. Mm -hmm. Because that will help your compressions. Yeah. So okay. you just compress like that. So with engorgement. Another little trick is cabbage leaves. Cabbage leaves have an enzyme that actually helps with engorgement. So you take a cabbage leaf, you know the big one, mm -hmm. and then you take a fork, mm -hmm. scrape the insides, um, or you can put it in a cool place if you have a fridge, put it in a fridge for around 20 minutes for it to yeah. cool. Then take the fork, the inside, you know the inside of now the leaf, mm -hmm. scrape, 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 and put that against the, the breast. Oh, so you okay. can even put your bra, you know you put your bra and place it like your bra, mm -hmm. the leaf, and let it cover. So don't, don't use it for very long, mm -hmm. because, because that ends and what it does, it helps the the, the engorgement end. So using them often can also work against your milk supply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we just want it to relieve the engorgement. But the best way to relieve engorgement is to breastfeed on demand as often as possible yeah. so the milk doesn't build up. Mastitis, you start feeling feverish, almost like you have malaria. That's what most people say, feel like I have malaria. Mm -hmm. Feverish, chills, um, a lot of pain, sometimes even mild confusion because now it's really and then intense pain. It will have like streaks, um, raised bumps and streaks. Mm -hmm. So that needs medication. Go. Please go see your doctor as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Once you see all these signs, that needs medication and it needs medical attention. And can you continue to breastfeed while you're on medication? Um, depending on the degree of of the infection of the infection okay. but yes you can most times you can mm -hmm. if your doctor tells you that they need to to you, they need to, to to be aggressive on it then you'll be told to breastfeed on on the breast that's 
that's okay, that's better. Mm -hmm. And then the other one would be told maybe to express and dump the milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you really still have to remove the milk. So that the milk supply doesn't work. Exactly. Out. And also the milk that's being formed okay. doesn't make you sicker. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And what about uh, I know some mothers actually thought this was a sign of a, a clogged duct. Mm -hmm. They'll mention uh, they see a black patch on the nipple. On the nipple. It's usually more of a white patch. Okay. It's white. Um, it's white uh, and, and it, it looks um, it looks like it's a pimple. You know the pimple you get? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a pimple, you must see the white, the pimple, and it can have like a black ring around it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that it is. But we actually don't call that a block duct. We call it more of a bleb. It's a milk blister. Okay. So the milk has come and at the end, you see the clogged duct is at the duct. Mm -hmm. So the milk uh, milk blister is at the nipple place. So it's where the milk is supposed to be coming out. It's been blocked. Okay. So that one is a bit more dif different. Because um, some things can get infected so you need medication. But a good way is to take some vinegar. Mm -hmm. Vinegar, soak it in cotton wool. Take tip, tape it there. Take the vinegar, um, put soak some cotton wool um, in just normal vinegar, and then place it there. Um, tape, tape so that it soaks mm -hmm. into that lip for a while, like for maybe 30 40 minutes. And then, usually, when you remove it and you just try, you know, the way you used to press the people just goes. gently mm -hmm. try and press, and usually a long, stringy thing will come mm -hmm. off, and then it's unblocked. Okay, yeah, so it's slightly different from. A clock duct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. And how long? You had mentioned about the cabbage. Yes. And the you didn't. Mean, how long exactly? Like maybe uh, twenty thirty minutes. Ah. Yes. And then remove it because then you to have even gotten hot and and and, and now it's comfortable. comfortable. Okay. Yeah. And usually you feel that judgment um, reducing. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now, um, with. What about mothers mm -hmm. who are actually struggling? And I think you had mentioned, alluded to this earlier, mm -hmm. mothers who are actually struggling to increase milk supply. Exactly. Yeah. What are some of the tips you might have for them? So number one, um, it's a factory. Mm -hmm. This, it's a factory. So the factory is the brain. So we talk about the three Bs. Baby, mm -hmm. breast, mm -hmm. and brain. Okay. So the baby is the client. The breast is the machines in the factory. Mm -hmm. The breast, the is, brain, the brain. Sorry, is the is the is the, is the, the maker, the manufacturer. Okay. So when this baby comes on the breast and starts breastfeeding, he tells the factory and make milk, make milk because there's a client, there's an order being placed. Uh -huh. So the first thing is you need to breastfeed your baby as often as possible. Be patient. Don't be in a hurry to get your baby to sleep through the night. Because when that happens, your supply will go down. So the first thing to increase your milk supply is breastfeed, breastfeed, breastfeed. The more milk out, the more milk in. Mm -hmm. Every time we make an order, the, the order goes, it's made by the brain, operates, releases hormones that makes more milk. And milk is actually made concurrently. We have two hormones responsible for, for, for breastfeeding. The first hormone actually produces the milk. The next one helps the milk to flow. So when you are, the more hormones that are being released, the more milk will be there. So that's the first tip. Because sometimes you find a mom saying, my baby is sleeping the whole night. Mm -hmm. That's a mom who have issues with supply. Her mom was going back to work, so she was at home with her baby, and then now she's going back to work and suddenly, whoop, supply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What has happened? The client has stopped asking. So you have to keep this client active by pumping when you're at work, mm -hmm. so that the factory. Mm -hmm. Keeps going. If the factory does not receive orders, there will be no, no milk meat. Yeah. yeah. Secondly, um, the next thing is to take lots of fluids. So a lot of people eat too much and don't drink enough. Breast milk is 80% water. So you actually need to take, take a lot, much, much more fluids mm -hmm. than actually the solids. So eat normally. Don't eat for two. Eat the you normal fluids. You probably need just an extra 500 calories a day. That's like if you usually eat two slices of bread, now you eat three. It's not that, it's not eating for two. It's not that it's not like four, yeah, ten, 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 you know, ten, no? exactly. No, it's just a little more. Mm -hmm. When you eat too much, all your body does, it goes into starvation mode. It thinks that maybe we are starving, so let's store food. 
and that energy that would have gone to make milk now it ends up being oh, digesting all this food. Eh? Mm -hmm. So drink more. And porridge is not a drink. Kenyan women, Kenyan really? people, or African in us. I think everyone was given an entire thumb of <laughs> <stomach. laughs> yes, a thumb of oh, 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 porridge. Oh, porridge. <laughs> but we eat porridge. The English say we eat porridge. Porridge is a food. It's like ugali. Even if it's, 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 it's light. Really, yeah. Because yeah. porridge is, is a starch. The starch in it has to be digested. So the body treats it like. Food. Yeah. So people is wow. people are taking a whole flask of, of, of porridge and ending up not taking enough foods because of this porridge. They're so full. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about teas, um, um, water, good old plain water, um, soups. soups, you know, take lots of fluids. Mm -hmm. It's okay to take your porridge, but don't take so much porridge that now you don't have space drinking. for yeah. drinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, thirdly, get enough rest. So the hormones in our bodies are replaced when we are sleeping. I know you have to wake up every three hours to feed your baby, but instead of entertaining all those guests in the house that have come, go and sleep. <laughs> you know, I know, I know. Schedule them. Schedule them in, you know, so that you have enough time to, to rest. So that at least then it gets it gets the flow going. Another way to increase supply is actually to express. So uh, some of our babies, what they do, they'll feed on one breast and they are full. And this other breast was full. So what the factory does, if you don't remove the one from the other breast, the factory says, hey, I think we are okay. Let's not produce more mm -hmm. because we have like we have a lot of supply. So one of the things to do, especially um, I don't encourage you to start pumping right from people pump from hospital. No, once you've relaxed, you've, your baby has learned how to breastfeed um, mm -hmm. around uh, five, six weeks, then you can now start saying, okay, the baby has breastfed on this one, they're full, this other one is full, then you start expressing. expressing. So express the extra one. So that keeps the factory going, saying, we made X amount of milk, X amount was needed, so we need to up supply. Mm -hmm. So that keeps the, the factory going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting, mm -hmm. you talked about, um, like, you, you need plenty of sleep. I know mm. this is a challenge that some mothers have even raised, yeah. especially when they go back to work. Yes. You think that you're back in the office, you are who you are when yes. you left, yes. workload is the same, yes. and you end up not sleeping enough because yeah. you even start carrying work home. Yes. And we've actually spoken to some mothers and told them, you need to be honest with the office and tell them, mm. this is, mm -hmm. I used to give you two days, I would give you in five. Exactly. Exactly. Because you really need to rest. Because you are, and, and that's what we're talking about, even part of the breastfeeding bill that uh, we hope will be signed soon, mm -hmm. is to give mothers more flexible time for mm -hmm. them to be able to, to, because it is a difficult time. Mm -hmm. But also tell moms, this baby's learn. So don't, um, once your baby is around um, four weeks or so, establish a routine mm -hmm. that will help your baby learn how to sleep better at night. You know, so that at least even if you see if the baby wakes up and feeds for 20 minutes and then they go back to sleep, then you go back to sleep. You won't feel as tired as a baby who's now up and about because you did not establish a routine. So your baby now feels that night time is time to play. So they are up the whole night. And so sleeping during the day. And during the day. So start encouraging, starting a routine. Um, that's a whole other topic yes. that can be handled another day. But start a routine so that you teach your baby early enough mm -hmm. to to actually learn how to sleep, to change their clock. And most babies, if you start early from birth, around six to seven weeks, they've actually kind of shifted their clock to night time. Not to say they will not continue waking up to feed, but when they wake up, they'll just feed and then go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. And that helps the mother get a bit more sleep. Mm -hmm. But there's a way to work it out. If you're going to work, when you get home, like maybe you get home at like at six, take a power nap for two hours, you know, because you know your baby probably sleeps a bit later, you know. To so take a power nap when people in the household is still moving Fire around, around, you know, you know some that baby, the baby. baby, yeah. So take a two, three hour nap, you know, and then that helps you because when the baby is awake at night and everyone else is asleep, at least you had napped a bit. So guard it generously. I used to tell moms at lunchtime, you have a lunch break, eat quickly. Take a pan up on your desk, you know, like try and get as much sleep in as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we're going to move over to uh, working moms mm -hmm. as a one very useful tool mm -hmm. 
is the press pump. Yes. So we have two press pumps here, the manual mm -hmm. and an electric press pump. Yes. But before we even go into that, maybe we could drive into the pros and cons of each. Mm -hmm. Like, what should a mother consider mm -hmm. before she buys either a manual one or an electric one? Um, so, look at, of course, the pocket. Yes. Because, <laughs> of course, the manual will be slightly cheaper, will be cheaper than, than the, the, electric. the electric. Secondly, think ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, you are at home during the, 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 the maternity leave. It's easier to see it and an electric is a bit more elaborate, is a socket. So think of when you go back to work, will you have that socket? Mm -hmm. Will you have the money to buy batteries if you don't have the socket? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe your space does not really encourage you to, you know, to move, to have all these things. So maybe the manual pump is easier because it is self-contained mm -hmm. into, into pump. Then just generally your own preference. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to your friends, see what they say, and then decide which, which seems to do well uh, for you. But pumps are a great tool for working moms because they, they will help you um, remove the milk for your baby so that you're able to establish and keep to exclusive breastfeeding, especially for six months, and continue on to one year. Mm -hmm. You're not relaxing at six months. You continue on pumping because we encourage you to give breast milk uh, to to babies until one year, so that you, you delay um, introduction of cow milk or formula mm -hmm. until age one, if possible. Okay. Yes. Yeah. What are the uh, like What are the risks of cow milk? Why why uh, is it usually? Is why so do they try to delay? Delay. So cow milk is approximately three or four times heavier than breast milk in terms of mineral composition, protein composition, and so what it does, it it number one places a big load on the baby's kidneys because the baby's kidneys are still okay. immature so they have to work so hard to to, 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 clear, to, to clear out the, the minerals in the milk. Secondly, it's been linked to iron deficiency because what it does, it it, it goes and irritates the gut and makes it leaky, like it have holes, mm -hmm. so the minerals get lost. So instead of minerals being absorbed, they get lost. So cow milk especially is really hard and what cows are eating now you know when we were young, my mother keeps arguing with me and mm -hmm. you, you took cow milk and I was like, no, it wasn't necessarily the right thing, but also cows in our days used to eat grass. So that was easier milk. Nowadays cows eat more grains, which are very, very hard for, we're even having more milk allergies, even among adults. Mm -hmm. You have many adults nowadays are not taking milk, when they take milk, it's really hard on them. So you can imagine on an infant. Yeah, and I think also a lot of our milk was straight from the cow, it didn't exactly. have a lot of processing. processing and all that stuff. Right yeah. now, if you're buying from the store, it's mm -hmm. gone through a really long exactly. process. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. if you can and you have the breast milk, which is perfect, continue expressing. Yeah. Um, challenge. Uh, you know, we, nowadays we always talk challenges. So, all my children took uh, breast milk until 15 months, not even one year. Wow. So, I would use, I would put conflicts and put my breast milk on the conflicts. Nothing wrong with it. Wow. Yeah. So you can you can do it mm -hmm. if you if you decide to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And such tools are useful are very for that. Helpful, yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, let's start with the manual mm -hmm. uh, breast pump. Yes. Maybe you could tell us like about the different parts. Uh, yeah. And so what to really note is that um, the first thing to do is that you really know how you need to know how to assemble it mm -hmm. because you have to clean every part separately. Yeah. So and sterilize. That's really important. So read read your manual um, so that you know how to assemble it. Um, a very important part of, of the pump is actually this. Mm -hmm. This is what provides the suction. Mm -hmm. So most pumps have it. And so if you lose this, yeah, they just buy a new one. But just buy a new pump if you didn't come with an extra one. So mm -hmm. this is very important because it helps the suction of, of the pump. So you have the bottle. You have you have the suction pump, and then you have um, the the top part, um, which is the flange. Mm -hmm. And we most uh, you have this. Um, we, it's usually like a silicone uh, cover, like a cushion, to the to the to the flange. We call this the flange, okay. and this is what comes into contact with the breast. Mm -hmm. We have the, the silicone uh, cover mm -hmm. that comes to the flange. This mm -hmm. is the part that comes into contact with the breast. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, you need to, to open up everything. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the, the part that actually works mm -hmm. to bring in 
um, create the sensory and the suction. Mm -hmm. And you need to always remove everything because you need to to what to clean to every clean single every single part. part. So learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we assemble our our pump. Mm -hmm. So another tip, um, this this silicone um, cover. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for some of our more blessed, <laughs> they call them that. Especially the uh, the black race, the African race, mm -hmm. we tend to have bigger areolas. So over time, we've learned that sometimes this can make you not have a very good latch okay. on the breast. So if you use it first, use with it first. If you find that you're not feeling a very good suction mm -hmm. you can try and use without it yeah and then yes so our pump is ready for use mm -hmm. and you can even test and see if you can feel you know you feel like, the, you feel the you feel coming. yeah either the milk or even just even before you start to use it you can feel the tension mm -hmm. so to know that there's actually a vacuum mm -hmm. so to express milk um, you need to have a good latch on on the on the pump so you can see our our breast is there. Mm -hmm. And so as I was saying earlier, sometimes this you might not get a very good suction mm -hmm. because depending on the areola. So I think we shall pretend we are amply blessed yes. black women. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. So as you can see, the suction is much more. So I find people pulling, as you can see, that's really, really it can be, it can be painful mm -hmm. and it will stretch out your nipple and you'll end up having nipple pain. So don't pull so hard. It's just a gentle it's just a gentle movement. So you don't have to go all the way. No, no. actually way. you don't have to to you know keep that as you can see what mm -hmm. that does, yeah? So you just even the baby does not really pull so much. The baby just does a small sucking, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's the same. So you start like that. As you can see, you can see the breast. Yes, the yeah. suction, the suction happening. Okay. So soon you'll see the milk flow. Okay. So when you start expressing at the beginning, don't be in a hurry to start seeing milk coming. What the pump, because the pump is a slightly different movement mm -hmm. of of a uh, mechanism of removing milk. It's more of a pull. It's not like the suckling, which is a circular motion of the baby. So you kind of need have. You kind of need to, to to stimulate the milk fast. So when you start, just start and give it time. For most women, you will start seeing milk after two, three, four minutes. So a lot of people start one minute, then they're like, "There's nothing coming out." And they get frustrated, and then, and then they stop. That makes it worse. Yes. So give it time, yeah. Mm -hmm. So give it, and sometimes even before you start pumping, you can massage with your hot cloth. You know, mm -hmm. do compressions like that, and then now start. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and give it time, okay. three, four, especially if this is your first time, it takes a while. As the breast gets used to it, it will become faster, the milk comes out faster. Mm -hmm. So express for around 20 minutes, that's enough, um, 20 minutes. And sometimes to empty the breasts uh, more efficiently, you can pump the breast you're pumping mm -hmm. for around five or so minutes, remove pump the other one for around two minutes. What are you trying? You're trying to stimulate the let down, mm -hmm. the that thing of when you when you, you breastfeed on one, there's then, some then, so that's what you're trying to stimulate. So pump for around five minutes, mm -hmm. stop, put on the opposite breast for a few minutes, and then go back to the one that you are breastfeeding, uh, when you are pumping initially, initially mm -hmm. until you empty that. Then now pump the other one. So it will stimulate yeah. more milk production. Exactly, more milk production, more milk emptying. Mm -hmm. So what you're trying to do, you're trying to get as efficient as possible in in, in removing the milk. And what's like the what is the minimum amount? For example, when you let's say you're pumping for about twenty minutes, what amount would you oh, say you have sufficient milk? That's the thing. It's very different from all of us. Okay. So we all have different milk capacities. Capacity is some of us our cap and that, it does not matter the size of the breast. Oh, okay. Capacity is different. Capacity depends on the ducts that are actually in someone's breast. So having a big breast does not necessarily mean that that person has high capacity. Mm -hmm. So capacity means that there's a mom whose capacity is 50, 60 ml or 80 ml. Mm -hmm. So what it usually means even for that baby, uh, it means that that baby needs to feed more often. It doesn't say that that, and sometimes that's the confusion. 
we get discouraged because you've met this mother with 120 capacity because her ducks are warm. Mm -hmm. So her heart we will have one sitting and, and fill up to last the three hours. You, your capacity might be 80, so your baby will need to feed a bit More faster food. than, but both of you have enough milk. Okay. Because if I if I have a 20 liter jerry can and another one has an, a 50 liter jerry can, we don't carry the same, and that's how we are. So a mom with a higher capacity will fill the bottle. I see mom Olympics, I call mm -hmm. them mom Olympics, for posted. Uh, see, in 20 minutes I have 130, and this other one here has her 50, and she's so discouraged. She so thinks that maybe she doesn't wrong, she or she I don't have enough work. milk. Yeah, mm -hmm. no you do. All you need to do is you need to express a bit more, because that's your capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, all of you will have enough milk for your baby. So once you know that, that that's your capacity, you don't get discouraged. You just need to, the, this mom will pump once a day. You might need to pump twice to get the same amount of milk. So both of you have enough milk. So it's important for moms to know that. And then initially your milk will not come out a lot. You might have 20. The, but the more your skill, because it's a skill, right? Mm -hmm. The more you get your skill, you notice, ah, now I have more milk. As you go along, you're expressing more. Because now you're, you're becoming more skillful in knowing how to remove milk. So don't get discouraged if you get 20 ml the first day. As keep at it. Mm -hmm. As you go along, you'll be getting enough for your baby. And that's very useful information to have. I think even mother should be told that mm -hmm. the moment they even leave, leave the exactly. hospital, yeah. as, as in just before you leave, you yeah. tell them that because even with um, sort of like social pressure mm -hmm. and some people, as you said, like people are posting on social media, they have bottles and entire fridge. Exactly. <laughs> and you have much less, you tend to think, okay, maybe my capacity is low, low, let me just switch to formula. Exactly. Because yeah. you're, you're worried your baby, especially yeah. if it's the first child, you're worried mm -hmm. your baby isn't getting enough. enough. Yeah. And then I know also relatives sometimes can put pressure on you because mm -hmm. they, maybe when they had their child, they, they had, had a lot of, lot. yeah, they were walking in milk pours. Mm -hmm. But then, you for you, that's not your capacity. And it's not about even the size of the breast, it's just about the ducts that are actually um, mature and the ducts that are the ducts capability mm -hmm. of holding milk. Because as you said, it's a factory. So the capacity of a factory depends on the machines that are there and, mm -hmm. and whatever. So it's the same. So we are all different, we all have different capacities. Some of us might need to feed our babies more often to get them full. Doesn't mean you don't have milk, it just means your capacity is slightly different. From the other person whose capacity is more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to the electric. Yeah. Yes. So most of the parts are very similar. Yes. They are very similar to, to this other one. Mm -hmm. So the only difference is that now you're not manually expressing. expressing. Okay. We will use electricity or battery. Mm -hmm. Yes. So right there. So usually have this to help you um, if you're uh, at a station. Okay. Yeah, so that goes there. And we have a wire. So some people say, won't, won't the electricity oh, shock, shock you? you? <laughs> As you can see, there's no electricity near the milk. Mm -hmm. It is all, the, the, the electricity comes here and provides the suction, or the, 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 the suction that the baby needs, I mean the suction that he needs. Mm -hmm. And because of the vacuum, even this one still has the the small. It's important to show this. Still has the the, the small suction. the small suction the, the the one that provides the vacuum. Mm -hmm. So it has that. So it's the same principle mm -hmm. as the manual. So the electricity is not. There's no way the electricity is coming into contact with you. With your body. Yeah. I've heard that a lot. A lot of my I'm sorry, have, I, I have complained. I didn't wear my glasses so I can't see. No problem. A lot of mothers have actually even come to us and they're like, oh, the electric one. Mm. I don't know. Will yeah. I be electrocuted? Yeah. Will it pump too much? And yeah. then start removing blood. I've actually had mothers that, yeah. worry about it removing yeah. blood. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, and we've got, um, as you can see, we've got we've got plus and minus, and that depends on the strength. So it's for you to determine how, how much pressure you that, that, you, that you work, how much suction is comfortable for you. Yeah. So there's the plus and, and minus. Mm -hmm. And it's actually already started pumping. Yes, it's already started pumping, because okay. it provides you the suction. And so you can hold for me so that people see how it works. 
as you can see. Okay, so now what we've done, we've increased the speed, mm -hmm. and but it's still comfortable for the mother. Mm -hmm. So you can go adding or increasing depending, depending on, on, how on how you feel. Okay. So it's the same principle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the so some pumps you kind of have to hard press the the power button mm -hmm. to to switch, to switch it, on. it on. Now you see this this um, this uh, we call it the. The, 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 the pulsing, we call it pulsing. Mm -hmm. Alright. Okay, so this button. So you see this button? Mm -hmm. We call it the pulse button. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it like stimulates the milk. Sometimes even when the baby is feeding, they start very quickly and then they slow down. Mm -hmm. So you can start off with that for like a minute or so. Then once you're done, you go back to now the, the normal the normal expressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So those are the differences mm -hmm. in, the, in the electric and, and the manual. Okay. Yeah. And also for so like some of the manual, like this one, it also has a battery. So exactly. for those who are worried about portability or exactly. having to find a socket, socket or being yeah. electrocuted, exactly. you can always use a battery. And it's simple because then you can be doing something else, you know. Oh, yeah. Why, 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 why 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 you're doing you're doing something yeah. else because you're not having to. Express, yeah, express manually. And actually, also, uh, interesting, there's this uh, bras, the nursing bras, exactly. which you can, which you can use to hold it, so you can even be a bit exactly. mobile, mobile and portable. Exactly. Yeah. So we encourage when moms are expressing, especially those ones who are at work, the working moms, um, if, if they are going to work, mm -hmm. Uh, carry something that smells of your baby. All these things, are, as I say, one of the hormones is a relaxation hormone and it's very connected to your brain. So for the mothers who are working, um, one of the ways to, you know, get more empty and get the milk out is work on your brain. So carry a photo of your baby. You have phones and you have a baby, maybe uh, the photos or, video video or, or a video and just playing it to be amazed at how that makes a difference in, in getting you to empty more of, 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 of the breast. Um, you can carry something that smells of your baby, maybe something your baby slept on. Just that smell of your baby would really help you to stimulate, go to a quiet place. Um, it's time that as, as women, we, we advocated for ourselves, most people say they, they pump in the car, or in the toilet, mm -hmm. or in the kitchen. You start advocating for yourself so that your employer provides a space for you to express the milk. And it's actually in the constitution right yes. now. Every yes. office needs to exactly. provide a lactation milk. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is you have to advocate. We advocate for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because that they won't just do it. Just okay, it. let yeah. me get this, this stuff as mm -hmm. and, and yeah, and sometimes it takes um, I always tell a story of one of my clients and she when she went back to work, everyone else would express in the toilet. And she was like, I'm not expressing in the toilet. I'm not getting my baby's food in the toilet. And so her boss had a closed office. The boss is the only one who had a closed office. So at 10 o'clock, she took her pound. She went and knocked and said, would you expect, excuse me for 20 minutes? We need to express milk. And the boss was so shocked. And he just stood up and <laughs> he left her okay. Trust me, the next day, we had she a meditation room. Yeah, so sometimes, I'm not saying get fired, but you can advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and she politely just went and told him, imagine I can't pump in the toilet. So please lend me your office for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Politely, you know. And it, it changed that office. So mm -hmm. be brave and yeah, because it is important for you and for your baby. Yeah, and I know a lot of people are asking why do you need an entire room? Why, mm. You know, what, why can't you, what's the big deal mm. about using a toilet? And I think it's important to think about it from your own perspective. Would you eat a sandwich? Would you eat food, food. that's been made in the toilet? Probably exactly. it hasn't touched anything. Yes. But just the fact that it was made in the toilet, would you eat it? Exactly. And yet you're expecting someone to feed that to feed it in the toilet. And it doesn't take a lot of space. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can have literally a room with just one chair. And moms can take turns, the moms that need to express in the office. They don't all need to sit. Mm -hmm. So it's literally a small corner of the office that is literally a few you know, sealed off at this private. private and that's good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we, we can make an effort as employers to equip and, and help our mothers. Because when a baby is well breastfed, that mother is not gonna take time off because her child isn't well. 
That mother is a better worker because she's relaxed, she knows I have enough for my baby. She's not always calling home to find out the new cover. You know, that's what they do. Yeah. So they are really not even working. So she'll be a more productive mother because she feels that she's well supported. Mm -hmm. Yes. So after expressing of milk, we go now into storage. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of debate about how long you can store milk in the fridge, in the mm -hmm. freezer, mm -hmm. uh, in the open. So oh, first of all, what are the storage methods available? Okay, so we've got, so for someone who has no fridge, um, we live in a hot environment. So we all Although not at the moment. <laughs> they are Although not at the moment, but basically um, most of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we work with that. So um, because of that, we give around four, four hours when you don't have a fridge, four to five hours um, from when the milk would start spoiling. Um, so one of the things that I do, and, and I found it very effective for people with no fridge, is you can take, look for a box, you know, like a box, um, mm -hmm. and then look for sand. Oh. Sand, you know the, the one for building, changa. Mm -hmm. And then look for charcoal and like, crush the charcoal and mix it up, make a mixture. Mm -hmm. Charcoal and sand are very good at, uh, at, 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 at reducing temperatures. So pour some water on that mixture so that the charcoal gets a bit wet. Mm -hmm. And then make a hole in the box or in the whatever. And then get a sufuria, just a normal sufuria. Put water in it. Mm -hmm. like, so it's like you've made a... a, a it's been like enclosed, enclosed, enclosed with the sand mm -hmm. and the whatever. Then now put your, your bottle of, of, of that you've expressed mm -hmm. inside that water. Mm -hmm. So it will give you another extra one or two hours because it's really cool. Okay. Another one is, you know the old pots that we used to have for water? Mm -hmm. When they are placed against an oven, I mean against the floor, they tend to really cool. So that's another way. Get a pot, mm -hmm. um, the oven pot, fill it with cold water, just normal water, leave it overnight, it will be really cool. So in the morning, put your water there. Mm -hmm. It will increase, stretch the time when the milk is not spoiled. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, for for other for for normal you know normal fridge like if you want to use the milk within uh, 24 hours um, you can use the normal fridge you know the way it's not frozen mm -hmm. and so in Kenya I, I've seen moms really freezing milk and bulk and bulk but over time we've, we've realized that because of our fluctuations our electrical fluctuations mm -hmm. the milk might be defrosting and freezing again First thing, you know, these fluctuations, what they do is that they make your, the milk, and then milk is it's just like animal milk. Yeah. This uh, defrosting and freezing again can be a problem. So for us, we're actually changing, for us, I know the international standard is six months, mm -hmm. but we're actually saying for our milk is around three, four months. Okay. And even that, you really stretched it because of the fluctuations. So I learned this from a colleague and I thought it's a great time, it's a great way for moms to know if their fridge is working efficiently. So you take, um, sorry, you take a bottle, mm -hmm. just a normal bottle, fill it with water, then freeze it like this, okay. like lying, lying down, lying, lying like that. Mm -hmm. So the water will freeze like that. Mm -hmm. Then once it's frozen, now place mm -hmm. it down. So if it's defrosting, you will start seeing some water. some water, then it freezes. So you know this fridge, because that's what will happen to your milk. Mm -hmm. So that's how, if, if it's remaining like that, then you know your fridge is an efficient fridge, so you can stretch the time. But if you start noticing this, um, this, um, this um, water now sitting on uh, this other side, then you know that that will happen to your milk. So you cannot store your milk for that long period of time. So that's what we say, around three, four months for the frozen milk. Mm -hmm. um, and if now it's a deep freezer, then you can maybe stretch it to six months if it's a deep freezer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And uh, that's, that's a really interesting idea. Mm -hmm. uh, what about um, ice packs? Do they help? Yes, they do. Especially for you who is pumping in the office and mm -hmm. you might not have a fridge. So carrying ice packs helps to keep the milk cool. But what I encourage moms is that that milk that you've expressed in the office and you put in ice packs, when you go home, don't freeze it. Mm -hmm. Let it be what your baby will use the following day. Mm -hmm. So you come and put it in the normal fridge and then let the baby take that mm -hmm. the next day. So ice packs are great because they keep the milk fresher for longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Now, what about mothers? Like you had mentioned about with pot mm -hmm. or even the the sofrio with the sand, mm -hmm. and uh, so these are for mothers who don't have a fridge. Mm -hmm. But then, more often than not, you find that they still need to work mm -hmm. the normal hours. Yes. So they'll probably be out of the house for a much longer yes. period. Yes. And that's why we are buying time with with this. Oh, with this, yeah, mm -hmm. with this. Um, because uh, they give you six, seven, even eight hours, and mm -hmm. it's really cool. So you see that at least it will give the, the mother time mm -hmm. to, to, to get home, mm -hmm. to be able to breastfeed the baby. Yeah, so it's, 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 it works actually. Mm -hmm. um, from several months we say, wow, it actually keeps even their own food. They realize their food stays stay, fresher. Stay fresher when they're used, so they, they're using it for, for mm -hmm. other things as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now uh, maybe to end us off. We could talk. Uh, there is different kinds of storage methods, mm. uh, and uh, you know, there's the glass, there's the plastic, mm. the the plastic uh, bottles that are the, that are there. There's the glass containers that are there. Mm. Is there a preference? Um, plastic. Uh, maybe I'll use this. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, we will, we will, so this is bisphenol A free. Mm -hmm. So BPA free. So if you're using plastic, you have to make sure that it is BPA free because it means that plastic will leach into the milk and it will slowly poison your baby. Mm -hmm. So when you read, when you get plastic, even bottles, most of them you'll find that that's it's what they are intended. It's written and it's safe for the baby. Mm -hmm. Glass is always red because then there's no plastic that's gonna go into it. Or you can use the the plastic bags, um, uh, the breastfeeding plastic bags that are safe for storage of milk. Are they still allowed with the ban? Um, we are in conversation. <laughs> Never, because they are useful uh, tool yeah. for mothers, and so this one it's one of the things that are under under um, discussion. discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with with Nema. All right. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Esther, for being here, thank and you. thank you for all the great advice. If you are looking to purchase a breast pump, we all do have them in our shop, both the manual and the electric, and they are BPA free. So you could always uh, get into our shop, and then you find some information there, or you could get in touch with us. If you do have any questions on breastfeeding or anything lactation, basically, do leave it in the comment section, and Esther will be there to answer. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.